This is Dumbing Soon, the show where we celebrate history's dumbest criminals and their true crimes before turning them into fake movies. Why? Because we love movies. And because we can. This is Nikki. Hi. And this is Fernando. Here's how this works. We take the facts of a real crime and turn them into plot points in a fake movie. Together, we'll decide what kind of movie we're making. We call the shots, spice up the dialogue, and maybe toss in a new character or two. Today's crime has all the elements of a great story. Love, disappointment, and redemption. Okay. Sound good? Let's hit the lights. Oh. Okay. We fade in. Medburn Crescent, Liverpool for 36-year-old Neil McArdle. It's a very exciting time because he has an elaborate, beautiful wedding mm. is in the works as he's set to marry the love of his life, Amy Williams, on April 26, 2013. Here we kind of have this interesting setup where we're opening our movie with the couple already. They're already in love. They're already in love uh, and engaged. Oh, oh, I have it. So maybe it's like we pan across some photos that is like the duration of the relationship. That's how we kind of get their backstory. I like that, like a Facebook timeline that yes. ends when they <laughs> check into the wedding. Maybe the picture from when he proposed or when she proposed. I mean, how do you think they would have met, like these, these two? Like, Coffee or, shop. Coffee shop? A pub. A pub. This yeah. is England. Oh, you're right. They were cheering for opposite teams. Huge rivalry match. Liverpool, Everton fan. The bar's very tense. Maybe a bad call is made. And as she turns around, she actually <laughs> slaps a guy in the face. At first he's mad. He's like, who did that? But then he sees her face. We get a close-up of their eyes. They lock. Yes. Would you like to go get coffee? But then, despite the shared excitement and preparations for the big day, which is fast approaching, McArdle made a big mistake. Uh-oh. What did he do? The day before their wedding, McArdle, he realized that he had actually never actually turned in the necessary forms to book their wedding venue. Oh, God. And that the dream wedding was not actually going to happen. Oh, that's bad. How does he realize this mistake? I picture him finding out, like, they're about to go have dinner, you know, the day before their wedding, and then he calls just to double check something with the wedding, and then the venue is like, um, what wedding? <laughs> and then she walks into the room, and she's like, are you ready? Like, she's dressed up, high heels, everything ready. He's on the phone and she's, he's like, oh, I'll meet you in the car. He rummages through his desk and he finds the papers he was supposed to give the venue but never did. McArdle, he, he intended to let Amy know about his little snafu as a good uh, fiance. Oh, communication matters, yes. That's the thing, he intended to. Okay, so imagine, all right, Neil, you know, he's stressing. He's like, Neil's thinking, I'm a good guy, so I'm gonna tell her. So, I don't know what that accent was, but okay. Uh, so he's like, I'm gonna tell her. Rolls over, she's not there. Oh, she's gone. He goes down the hall, he couldn't bear to do it when he realized that she had woken up at 4 a.m. the morning of the wedding to put on her wedding dress, and when he saw that, Oh my god. He doesn't tell her. No, he does not tell her. He's just like this, like, F I'm supposed to get married tomorrow. Wide angle from the top where he's just like, F Instead of telling Amy and dealing with this very embarrassing situation that could have been, you know, fixed, he came up with a plan. Oh no. Because on the day of the wedding, he decides he's gonna call in a fake bomb threat what? at the venue, St. George's Hall. Why was that just like the first thing, the go-to? So how do we show the audience that he's about to do something crazy? We see the sun come and go. He hasn't gotten any sleep. He looks terrible. Yeah, and there's a TV playing in the back. And then there's like... Like an a, explosion yeah. on TV. And then he looks at it. Maybe he drops whatever he's holding. His coffee. The world's best fiance. Uh, usual suspect style. And then he just walks out to buy a bomb. Oh wait, he doesn't actually buy it, right? <laughs> okay, to get a phone. He went to a public pay phone. He called the Liverpool Registry Office, part of the venue. So this is what he actually said. <clears throat> this is not. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Is it your mouse? I'm not gonna do any act. Don't here. do it. This is not a hoax call. There's a bomb in St George's Hall, and it will go off in 45 minutes. Yikes! That's 
early. But if you call in a bomb threat, they close the place down for like a day because they oh, gotta right, sweep right. it, make sure there's not actually yeah. a bomb. That's all he said. That's all he said. Yeah, that's boring. That's poor writing. I think we get rid of the hoax line. Mm -hmm. Maybe he does like a Bane voice. This is, this is not a joke. <laughs> There's a bomb in St. George's Hall. Can the person on the phone be like, well, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to say that again. <laughs> there's a bomb, there's a bomb, there's a bomb. One second, I'm gonna put you on hold. And then she puts him on hold. So after McArdle's phony call, you know, the building is evacuated by the authorities, mm. as one does. Some, in fact, describe the response as terror. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's terror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Terrorism. I, I want to stress this, that McArdle's phone call came just 11 days after the Boston Marathon bombing. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Oh, bad timing. Yeah, not the, not the best timing on McArdle's part. So, sirens, a cop car. Yeah. <laughs> Scared people running. A baby's crying. A woman screaming, maybe. Yes. And then, of course, like a truly devastating and heartbreaking scene. McArdle's fiance, she found herself and her party all waiting outside, all dressed up. Neil is not anywhere near her because he's freaking out in the corner over there being like, what did I do? Because now he's realizing that what he did is a crime. Against Neil's intentions, the bomb threat was diffused very quickly. It doesn't take very long for the authorities to actually sweep and they, they realized the hall was oh. safe. And suddenly now everyone is aware there was actually not supposed to be a wedding there that day. Because maybe the priest is like, My car, who? Neil, who? My name's Amy! <laughs> Amy! Oh I'm getting married! Push in to Ashley. I'm just naming her Ashley. I don't know her name is. Sister. Her yeah, sister. sister where you get close and she's looking straight at Neil, and then you cut to Neil, and he's a little bit sweaty. She doesn't like Neil. We feel like Neil and Amy's sister. There's probably some past history there. For sure. Because she was the one who met him first at the bar, but Neil fell in love with Amy instead. Wow. So then she hated him. She goes over to Neil. Reportedly, she says, "You've probably done the bomb scare yourself." So how do we ramp up the drama of the moment? Like, Oh, um, it was you, wasn't it? There never was a bomb. And he goes, what is going on, Neil? What is she saying? You called them, saying. right? I absolutely did call. I booked this months in advance. Show me the e-receipt. <laughs> <laughs> do you see this, Amy? He didn't do anything. Neil, look at me. Do you love me? Of course I do. Not enough to plan this wedding. I'm sorry. And you see the disappointment and the betrayal in her face, and she turns around and walks away from him. And a single tear drops from his left eye. And a sad song comes up with like acoustic guitar. Soft and warm. But then, authorities were able to trace back McArdle's phone call, and he was arrested that same day. When he confessed, McArdle admits he panicked and he noted his embarrassment and shame. So how does that happen? And all of a sudden his hands are cuffed. He's walking towards the cop car. He's in front of everyone. Crying, shaking their heads. This logo of like Ashley being like. I imagine Neil is, he's an everyday guy. Her family, probably very wealthy oh. and upper class. She should marry the upper classman. Barry, he works at the bank. He's also not a real character. We, we decided to make up Barry. We'll throw him in there because it's more conflict. Amy's parents are in the corner crying. His dad is mouthing, I'm so disappointed in you. There's not a lot of comedy in this rom-com. Oh shit, my bad. After his arrest, McArdle, he, he pleads guilty to communicating false information. He's in the courtroom, you see the judge yelling, spits flying from his mouth. Mm. The judge, Norman Wright, said to McArdle, you did not say we need to talk. You tried to weasel your way out by creating a bomb hoax so the wedding would not take place. You have to understand, bomb hoaxes are extremely serious. The judge believed that McArdle's actions must have shock, shook, sheer terror in the heart of those at St. George's Hall. They were shook. You zoom out and to see that it's being watched on a TV and you see Amy sitting at home watching this happen. The frame gets bigger so it reveals more of what's around her and you see a man's arm get put around her. <gasps> it's Barry from the bank! <laughs> McArdle was sentenced to 12 months in jail and ordered 
very randomly to pay 100 pounds in court costs. I mean, like 100 pounds, all right. But as of McArdle's sentencing in October 2013, Amy Williams is still with her fiance. Oh. She's stuck with her man. How does this play out? How do they reconcile? So it's early morning. The prison gates roll back. Amy's standing outside her car waiting for him. No, well, no, you don't think so? I think he needs to go fight for her. We need uh, to believe He's got to win now. her back. Yeah, because okay. she's with Bobby. She's Barry. Barry. Yeah. I'm thinking he goes straight to her townhouse. Dramatic music. He's still wearing his jumpsuit. I never seem to find the words to say. Uh, could, could it be snowing? Um, the stakes are higher when it's snowing because if he's outside for a while, his feet will get cold. Okay. <laughs> He's probably wearing his wedding suit. Yeah. If that's oh, what he got right. arrested in. He's banging on the door. But instead of Amy opening the door, it is Barry. Hey, Neil, bring a bomb this time. And then Neil's like, pushes him out of the way. Punches him. You guys, Neil's trying to redeem himself. But he's fighting for Amy's love. It's a comedy, so maybe I need to the groin or something. No, 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 throat punch. Yeah. You know what, Barry, eat this. Pow, he's right in the throat, throat punch. And he's like, oh. And when he falls, what we see behind him is Amy in a rope and a coffee mug. And she's like, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Neil. What's your name? <laughs> Neil, is that you? So, we're here at the pivotal moment of the movie. There needs to be, of course, that romantic monologue that just drives the entire movie home. You go first. What, do you, what does he say? A Amy's just looking at him. Amy, I behaved so well in prison to get out early. And I couldn't get out early, but I'm here now. Please marry me. Let's try this again. Let's do it again. So then Amy walks up to him and she says, she was like this, Neil, I've been waiting for you. And then they kiss. Barry just gets up, hope this wedding goes through, and he just leaves, exits frame, nobody cares. Uh, okay, so that's beautiful. Uh, Nikki, in your mind, how does this go? Okay, so he walks up to Amy and he says, Amy, 12 months in prison was nothing compared to how you looked at me on that day. I will never forget how I let you down. And if you let me back into your life. I promise I will spend every day making you as happy as you can be. Will you marry me? Again. Or for the first time, actually. And you don't know what she's gonna say. She's upset, but also she's seen him for the first time in a year. And Barry's maybe like, Amy, wait. Because his vocal cord has been smashed. He sucks. <laughs> so then Amy looks up at him. Baby, not even a bomb and a prison sentence can keep us apart. And they kiss. Pretty. Pretty. I mean, you know, both great. But I, I know. I was gonna say, I'm just saying. <laughs> I like yours better too. Oh, thank you. If we could just have snow in it, I think it would be there stellar. There is snow outside. But He's like, if the snow could snow. just. Camera pans up into black and it pans down, fade into the wedding at the church. Everyone's there. Yeah, Barry's there with a bruised neck. <laughs> oh, oh, Ashley's with Barry. They're together. There's a happy ending. They're together yes! now. They're of together. course. All these movies, when they have the wedding, they always have like, it's always some sort of like 60s R&B or 60s like soul classic. They kiss, they're about to walk down the aisle, the same police chief kicks down the door. Everyone evacuate, we've got a bomb. But then his, his serious face turns into a smile and there's a ding and then we cut to credits. <laughs> And over the end credits, it's like there's credits playing, but then there's also just like, uh, there's, you know, bloopers. So I think we have a great movie here. Well, we got a movie here, at least. A title sells a movie, right? So what's, what's the title? Even like the wedding bomb, the poster is like him in his suit and tie, but it's all like disheveled because he's stressed and he's got his hands and his hair like. With all their faces, like everybody coming out of the same area. Yeah, I like it. So that's it. That is the wedding bomb. Christmas 2019. Dumbing soon. Dumbing soon indeed.
<laughs> so who would be the stars? Um, it has to be a British cast. Oh, oh my god, Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts. Oh. She's not British. I mean Emma Thompson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The girl from the girl from Harry Potter. Emma Watson. Emma Watson. <laughs> <laughs>